everybody, it is Romania Black, and we're on the <laughs> penultimate episode of Skip and Loafer. Oh, I hope they do a season two. I really do. I really hope they do a season two because I don't want this to be the end, this episode, the next. And I think there's a lot of, there's a lot of places it can go. I don't know if they'll do a season two. I hope that they do. Um, it may be a while, but... I mean, I have lots of anime I can watch in the meantime, but this one has been so, so good. I definitely understand the hype when I was, when it was first coming out, everybody's like, oh, you need to watch Skip and Loafer. And I was like, oh, I'll get around to it. And they were like, you really need to watch it. It is. It's just very, it's a very nonchalant show in that it doesn't like, you don't think the stakes are insanely high because it's slice of life, but then it has these characters and does this thematic work that makes you think about yourself, makes you think about how you, you know, act around other people, about what your actions and the influences they have on others for better or for worse. It's just a really, really good show. And it's just solid. It's like a nice little comfort anime that if you want to watch it and feel better about yourself, you're like, I will do this. Mitsumi will be my life coach. <laughs> And I just honestly have come to like it a lot. So I hope they give us another season because with all of the dark, depressing, heavy shows that can be on my channel at times, this one has definitely been a welcomed presence to help brighten my, my Tuesdays up and make them better. So, so last episode, uh, both Shima and Mitsumi kind of like helped each other out. Mitsumi has been helping Shima the entire time, but Shima seemingly helped out Mitsumi kind of find her groove back and then realized girl can get up. She can dust herself off on her own. She don't need nobody. Um, she, I like that Mitsumi is self-aware that she found that she flounders sometimes. Um, but she is aware of that. And she's like, I know I just had a moment, but now I'm good. And I feel like Shima, I feel like I want Shima to learn from her, but I also want Shima to like have his own voice. And with this play coming up and we know his parents are probably going to go, Rurika is probably going to be there. I'm like, I want Shima to be the one to like be vocal and be like, no, you're, I'm sorry what's happened to you. I'm sorry that I played a part in that, but we need to move on. And if you can't move on without being toxic, then we need to part ways and go be our own people and not be around each other. That's honestly what needs to happen because sometimes friendships don't last. That's just a fact of life. Sometimes you get around people and stuff happens and they change and it's no fault to either person or either party, but sometimes you just have to part ways and it sucks, but it's usually for the better of both parties that that happens. So we'll see. I, I can't believe last episode, it just came out of nowhere. They're like, okay, the festival's tomorrow. I'm like, I don't feel ready. I feel like we had so much time at the beginning when there was a month left and now there's none. <laughs> so I was like, ah, but yes, I'm super excited for this episode. It's the penultimate episode. Um, and then we'll have the finale. I'm so excited. So I hope you all are too, but we're not going to waste any more time. We are going to dive right into skip and loafer episode 11. And we're going to do that here in three, two, one. And let's, uh, let's go. Ah, why can't we have nice things? <laughs> oh, this episode was so good. So good. But I was like, oh, it's going all right. We're going to get Shima and his mom and his little brother all together. And then no, this drama bitch shows up. Ah, and we'll talk about Rurika. We'll talk about her. I, uh, she is so, she's so frustrating, right? So frustrating. So I love a drama festival. I love a high school festival because I don't like the drama, but I like the festival. I love festivals um, in high school anime because I don't really experience that myself. Um, I'm in the U.S. and um, I don't know. I mean, high schools in the U.S. There's so many high schools, so I don't know how a lot of you in the comment section can talk about how your high school does it. My high school, we uh, we had a. Um, it was called Spirit Week. It was like for homecoming, where we'd have a basketball game. Was like the big thing. There was a homecoming dance and a basketball game. And throughout the week, we would do like Olympic sports. Like I, I'm from a very rural high school. So we had like barnyard Olympics. Like, can you stack up hay <laughs> a certain time? We had wheelbarrow races. I, I wish I was joking about this, <laughs> but it was fun, right? And we did lots of games and stuff like that. So we, we had games throughout the, the week and everything that all the classes kind of competed with against each other with, which was really fun. But we didn't have something like this. Like our high school was not anywhere on the scale of the size of this Tokyo high school. Um, it was like, we had like four classrooms. So 
it was not this size at all. So I love the concept. I also think in the U.S. you don't really have recruitment for high schools. In the U.S. you kind of just go to the high school in your district. Or if you don't, then you, you know, you can transfer to other districts, but you usually have to pay money to do that, which is a thing in itself. Um, but we don't have recruitment for high schools. Instead, you have like college recruitment. So we have like a back to school festival that's a very downscaled version of this at the at the college I work at. But um, I do really like the idea that this festival is not only to show off for these high schools and their students and their classes, but to recruit, to get people to actually want to come and join, which is really, really cool, right? So let's go back to this. I wanted to talk about the president and uh, Takamine and kind of their uh, their similarities and differences. The, the president, I gave him a really hard time when he first, like, ran for office because I kind of wanted to defend Takamine. I was like, girl, no, I understand. You are trying, you've, you've built up your whole high school career to be this president. And then this popular guy comes in and takes the role from you. And you're like, mm. but what I really hope is that from this festival and after talking with the girls, she kind of, there, there's a lot of give and take there. And when you work in a setting that is for recruitment, a, a recruiter and an organizer are often two different things. And I've, I've had the fortunate, you know, prospect of I've worked as a recruiter for a school for a while and I've worked on the administrative side for a while. So on the administrative side, you need someone like Takamine that's organized, that's focused, that's driven, that's leaderly, that can get the tasks done. Like she's excellent at that. But recruitment is not necessarily, it's it's more about the performance. It's about being a face. It's about going up to people and being like, you should come to our school and here's why. And being a nice person. And, and the president, while he doesn't maybe have like the organizational stuff down like she does, he is definitely perfect for recruitment. He's a pretty face. He's someone that's warm and welcoming. He's inviting. He's calm and patient like the one girl says. He's exactly what that school needs to recruit because he's a like a model person to be like, oh, I can be around people like you at the school? Yeah. I don't think if people saw they were around people like Takamine, who can be very intimidating, I don't know if they'd be, you know, as receptive to coming there if she was the face of that. So, so I think that there's a lot of nice give and take there. And I think by the end of this episode, Takamine kind of, she sees it, but it's frustrating to her because she's like, uh, I see why he's good at his job. I see why they voted for him. He's good for these reasons. She's like, but he needs to stay on track. So I really loved that. I love seeing the different perspectives put out here. And it's something that you can relate to um, with Kaza, Kazakami and Takamine, not only <clears throat> in this high school setting, but it can relate to you like in the workplace as an adult and just in life in general, which is great. So yeah, I, I like Mitsumi throughout this where she's just, she gets to kind of explore the entire festival because of her job in student council. And I like that she gets to hang out with her friends and everything. But I, I do feel a little bit bad for her in that her own family and friends from middle school don't get to come and see this. That is the one thing that, that she's kind of isolated throughout this episode. She's like, oh, I wish my family and friends were here. I wish, I wish uh, Fumi and my other friends were able to come see this, but they can't, it's too far away. And there were several times in this episode, I wanted Shima, I kept expecting for Shima to like see her be kind of down and out and like go up to her and be like, hey, and do kind of like what he did in the last episode. And that's when Rika shows up and is the drama, but one, we already did kind of the cheering up last episode and established that Mitsumi, even if she gets kind of down and out, she's going to pick herself back up like she does in this episode. Um, but also, I think that Shima is so focused on the play and figuring out if this is something he really likes that he's not really, he doesn't have time to focus on other things. So it's fine. I'm glad the episode does what it does. It makes sense. And also it allows Mitsumi to kind of rationalize that, yeah, everybody's got their own issues. They're all working through things too. Everyone's got stuff they're working through. Um, whether it's on the same level as other people, that's that doesn't matter. I want to talk about the play because the play, when they were doing the rehearsals and you see like in their head, like the visions of how grandeur and great the play was, I was like, how does this high school have this budget? <laughs> so I'm glad that we see how realistic this show is and that they actually show not only the wardrobes being something very simple that you could anybody could come up with, but the set design is very simple. It's just got little props, a few little things. Like it's very doable. Like Hanachika's play is very minimalist. It, it felt like a high school play. And I was like, yes, this is 
absolutely perfect. They had to build the stage too. I've been in a stagecraft class before. These sets, they look simple and they look small, but they are hard freaking work. So I, they had to build their own stage too, which is crazy to me, but I love the play. I love how it goes that everybody is having such a good time. And we get to see the snippets of it. And Shima and uh, Shima and his partner, they do such a good job. It's really good. And I like, I like y Yamada was the MVP of this episode, keeping Kiri like happy. Yamada is, he did the work. I love that he instantly is great with children. I'm like, girls, you know what? Yamada can be a little bit out over outgoing and a little over, a little much sometimes, but he's a really good character. And I think you shouldn't sleep on him. I, well... I phrased that weird. <laughs> you you shouldn't sleep on him in terms of you shouldn't let him pass by. Rephrase. <laughs> so get our minds out of the gutter. I love how this is basically Sound of Music. It's great. But also, Shima, this play is kind of an, a, a representation of him being like him trying to fight with going, wanting to go with the flow and make people comfortable and that fight between that and his desire to do what he wants to do, like that's such a, a big representation of this entire season is that Shima is trying to people trying to be complacent and keep people satisfied, but it's at the cost of what he wants to do. And that's something he needs to figure out this season, being like, no, you need to do what you know what to do. You can't please everyone. You can't satisfy everyone. You just need to do what you're happy with. And they'll either support you in those decisions or they don't need to be in your life. That, that's essentially it, right? That's essentially it. They either need to be happy or they, they either need to be happy or they need to just, you know, not be a part of your life if they can't support you in your decisions, right? And that's a hard lesson from high school because I know that, I know that feeling of wanting to please people and you don't, losing a friend is hard. That's the whole thing with Rurika that's so painstaking is that we see from Rurika's perspective why is she is so sad and why she has all this insecurity and why she feels like she's been done so dirty. And it, it makes sense. And I get that. And I feel for her because it is a double standard. It does suck. But in the same vein, I'm like, I understand where she's coming from, but that doesn't excuse her being so cruel to Shima and dragging him through the mud and wrecking his life. Like he was in sixth grade with you. She needs to go to some therapy and, and I honestly think she needs to stay away from him. They just need to break up their friendship, go separate ways and become better people because of it. And I don't think that's going to happen because I think the series is going to try to find a way to make it to where she can be friends with him, but, and do things. But I hope she at least decides to go to some therapy or see somebody by the end of the season. Cause she needs to, but I don't know if it were me losing a friend is hard, but sometimes it is the better decision if you are going ways that are that are intersecting in a bad scenario or in a bad way or you just are going so far apart from each other it's not feasible anymore that's why i say i'm really curious to see how they're going to resolve this next episode or if they're going to resolve it they could do lots of different things they could either resolve it where shima and rurika can still be friends and she sees the light but i feel like that's going to be too rushed or they could take like a baby step next episode to her maybe realizing what she's doing and how it's affecting Shima and that he's not happy about it. And maybe Mitsumi or somebody will be like, well, he deserves to have his own happiness. Get out. I don't know. And maybe she'll take a step towards becoming a better person. That would be great. Or it's going to get resolved and they're going to go separate ways. I think it's going to go the middle route where Mitsumi or somebody's going to talk to her and be like, hey, you need to get a hold on yourself and quit trying to drag people down with you. And then maybe you can be friends with Shima if you can get your act together. And I don't know. I don't know how it's going to go down. I'm going to be very curious to see. But I'm rooting for Shima to stand up for himself and defend himself. And because even though something bad's happened in the past, that doesn't change the fact that he deserves to have a better future. Right? He deserves to have happiness. Everyone does. So I love this guy in the audience watching the play. It's like he had a revelation. He's like, I'm going to be in that theater club next year. <laughs> It's great. I love it. I also love Mika. Like Igashira. She like was so nice this episode. I was like, oh girl, like like her being in the play like did wonders for her personality. I was like, oh girl, like she wasn't she didn't act like she was jealous or envious or anything like that this episode. She was genuinely like being herself and it was so cool. And her friends coming to see her. She wanted now to see her, which was like, oh, 
And I like that me that Mitsumi's like, well, she's at a photo shoot, so she can't, but I have a feeling Igashiro is going to tell her about it. It'd be cool if now showed up. If now showed up, that'd be amazing. Um, next episode, but I don't know if that's going to happen or not. I'm like, ah, but I really, really, really love that Mika was in such her element and she was having such a good time. I also like how they explain now and her being friends as they met on Pinsta on Pinstagram and Mitsumi's like, oh, that's how it is. And we're just going to brush the whole zoo thing under the rug. Makes sense. I like it. It works. That's great. But I I like that her and Igashira have become so close. It's really cool. Her friends are very stylish. I, I get it. I love that she sees her friends and she's instantly so happy. And that's when Mitsumi's like, mm, I don't have any of my friends coming to see me. But then we get, then we get the art room. Oh my gosh. So Yuzuki being an artist. I love it. I, I will say Angel, her Yorkie. I see it. <laughs> my best friend is a Yorkie. My best friend's Yorkie looks nothing like that. But um, I see it. I see with the hair coming out. It's a very impressionist, uh, an impressionist painting of a Yorkie. It is really pretty. I love the use of colors. It, it feels very Monet. I like it. I like it a lot um, of Angel. But man, I, I love the conversation Yuzuki has with Mitsumi about how all these guys keep coming up to her, which first of all, I maybe Yuzuki's bisexual, but I think she's into the ladies, which explains why Kunami is so perfect for her. Um, but I feel like she's not only, even if she does like guys, I feel like she hates that all of them come up and they just want to be with her because of how pretty she is, but they don't care about what she does. And I think this is a perfect lesson in that you need to be with somebody as a partner that cares for you and your interests and what you do. Like the looks can take you so far, but if they don't respect you and what you find, I mean, they don't have to like the things that you like. Like, I'm not saying that, that her partner needs to like painting and everything because Kunami doesn't, but I feel like they need to have an appreciation for the stuff you work so hard at that you pour your heart and soul into. They need to have a respect for that and appreciation of it. And and respect you for that. And none of the guys that come up to talk to her seem to do that. They all just want to hit on her because she's pretty. And then Yuzuki's like, they just, they don't understand what I'm doing and they don't respect it. Cause yeah, this one guy comes up and he's like, Oh, he comes up to her and says, wow. He's like, this is really nice. Did you paint it? And he's like blushing. So he's clearly hitting on her and he's like, Oh yeah. He's like, I saw you and you're, you're in the art club, huh? And then he's like, what's your first name? Like, doesn't even want to like, I'm like, dudes, Everyone, if you're in the dating scene, it's it's nerve wracking. <laughs> Been there. Um, and the first thing you want to do is like instantly like gravitate towards that person and hit on them and, and everything. But like, like get to know them a little bit first, <laughs> because usually people want to get to know you first rather than just instantly dive in. You know, it will make the relationship have more depth and be better. But some people just can't control that. And, you know, they don't realize that that's what they need to do. And some people, you know, sure, you're into a fling, whatever. But clearly not Yuzuki, right? And then now all of her middle school drama makes more sense because she's used to people just like in middle school only appreciating her for her looks and not who she is. I will also say what's really cool about this scene is that in the background, there's all these different pieces of artwork that the students have done. They're all really good. Like it's not just some generic animation where they just put a blob up on the wall being like, yeah, that's a painting. They took their time to like make these look great. And I'm like that that's going the extra distance. But this couple coming in, I thought they were Mitsumi's parents. I was like, I was so expecting it to be like a big, like shock and reveal, but no. And then Kunami comes in. Kunami coming in clutch with them churros. Clutch with the churros. I don't know. How much is 200 yen? I want to do yen to USD. Because I'm like, how much is 200 yen? I feel like it's not a crazy lot. Okay, so it's $1.30. It's 200 yen. I was like, that makes sense. I'm like, they're high school students. I don't think they're going to charge an outrageous amount for a churro. So $1.30 for a churro, that seems about legit. That seems fair. Um, but I love that Kunami not only brought enough for everyone, showing how considerate she is, but she straight up, like, did exactly what Yuzuki was wanting. And I like that it's kind of phrased in a romantic way. It is, right? Because Kunami's friends come with her. They all just somehow managed to find each other in a corner and looked at each other and was like, want to be friends? Sure. Like, they just, they're so quiet like she is. But like Kunami says, because Kunami has opened up to us over the course of the season, 
if you get to know them, they'll open up kind of like Kiri, Shima's brother, they'll open up and be, you know, really expressive and, and be really, and show you how great of a people they are. And I like how they're kind of shy around Yuzuki, but then Kunami is like, okay, I'm going to show you what a great person Yuzuki is so that you'll appreciate her more. And it's exactly what Yuzuki wanted to hear. And I was like, girl, if you have not asked Kunami out yet, I probably would because she seems to be right up your alley. Just saying. Oh, love it. So then they're all outside. I love how, I love the scene where the four of them all gathered. Like Mika met up with them. They all had the churros. And then as they're going back, Yuzuki drops like the friendship bomb being like, We've only known each other for six months, but look how good of friends we are. I was like, oh. and what I like about this series is that it shows you how you don't all have to be interested in the same thing to be close friends. Cause I feel like in a lot of series, because it's like a sports anime or because they're all like in a shonen where they're fighting the same monsters <laughs> or whatever that, that the characters have similarities and that's fine. But something I really like that's realistic about this show is showing how these four girls, like Yuzuki has her art, Kunami has her literature club, Mika has her drama club, and Mitsumi is the student council. Like they all are going different ways, but they are all still friends and they're all still really close. And because they're just kind people that share similar senses of humor and other things, there has to be some common ground, but you don't have to all like the exact same things. That's kind of like in college, it was kind of tricky sometimes to navigate being like, can you have a friend circle where you're all doing different things, but you all meet up together? And the answer is yes, right? But I feel like sometimes we get pigeonholed in school into certain groups and you feel like you can only be friends with people in those groups and then it can get toxic. So it's neat to see this friend group of the four of them going separate ways and it being healthy. And then you look at Shima and his actor friends who he's kind of like formed this group with because they all shared this acting background. And with Chris, it's great. Like Chris Kuhn is great and a good friend to Shima, but then you have Rurika who stays in this toxic system because that's all she knows instead of branching out and you can see like the other side of it, right? And Mukai doesn't seem to be part of the actor group. He's just Shima's friend from we don't know what else. But I like that Mukai is kind of like the buffer here at the school, right? Somebody that could be his friend. And then we have the mom coming up. We, we talk about the girl comes up and thanks the president for, the president's such a bro though. He's like, comes up with a corn dog and he's like, hey, you guys taking a break yet? <laughs> What a bro! I love him though. I, he's grown on me a lot these last few episodes, especially because he's such a foil for Takamine. If Takamine ended up with him, I think it would be hilarious because they're such a, a good foil for each other. But damn, Chris Kuhn ain't good at hiding hiding things. He's not good at all. Chris is like, oh, Sosuke has this one thing. But here's the, here's the deal. I feel like she was going to find out anyway. I feel like the moment he's like, oh no, Sosuke's got something that he's got to work on. She was going to find out because she's that person. She's the drama. She was going to figure out what was going on, that there was a festival. And then she's like, well, I'm going to go wreck shit. And I'm like, oh my God, girl, she's like plans without me. And I'm like, girl, you need to pump the brakes, kid. Pump the brakes. But yeah, they get everything set for the next day. I'm glad Mitsumi gets to meet Shima's mom. Shima's mom seems kind of like Shima, where she's really quiet, but kind. And Mitsumi is just like, ha So the way I understand it, he said Kiri was his stepbrother. So obviously the mom is Shima's mom. So that makes me think that Shima's dad, he calls him dad in this, um, his stepfather, that was his kid from maybe the stepfather got divorced and Kiri is just, they say they're, they act like brothers together. So I'm not sure if it's the subtitles that are off. I'm sure you all will comment in the comments. I don't know if Kiri is Shima's biological half brother or if he's a stepbrother and the dad that she married like had him with from a different relationship. Because they don't look alike. But that doesn't mean anything. Kiri could just look like his dad and not Shima's mom. I don't know. I'm, I'm hoping you all will tell me in the comments if they are stepbrothers or half-brothers. Because it doesn't make a difference. They're brothers either way. But just for clarity's sake, that'd be good to know. And then, oh man, at first I thought that Kanachika's outfit was something he deliberately chose to wear. Which would be on point with his floral patterns he's wore at high school. They they seem to like let it slide for him. 
<laughs> but um, I love the Yakuza outfit that he's wearing with the earrings and everything. He looks like something out of Twittering Birds Never Fly. <laughs> like, I instantly was like, you and Yashiro would get along swimmingly, I feel. But this part I really liked because it, it feels like Kanachika knows that Shima is a good actor and is trying to encourage him to come and see the performance. And Shima, I like that Shima is just like, like Kanachika's boundless attitude and persistence is something that Shima's kind of like repelled by, which is hilarious because he tolerates it with Rurika. Rurika is persistent and demanding, just like Kanachika, but Shima does, Shima tolerates it with Rurika because he feels guilty. He doesn't tolerate it with Hanachika because it doesn't feel like he needs to feel guilty. And because he thinks Hanachika is maybe mocking him or he doesn't understand Hanachika's game. And so that's why he's like, what is your end game with this acting? What are you trying to do? Why are you telling me about it? And I feel like Hanachika's like, well, you're good at it. So I just figured you'd be interested. And I'm just trying to like foster you. It's like Ririka and Hanachika are both so intense and persistent, but in opposite ways. With Rurika, she's trying to encourage Shima to not do things and to not have a good life. And Hanachika is trying to encourage him to have a good life and to do things if you feel passionate. And what I love is that he's like, well, are you, do you think, I thought that Shima was going to like mock him because I thought that he was going to ask Hanachika if he was going to be an actor and then he was going to be like, well, do you know how hard the acting industry is? Do you know the pressures and all this? He's like, do you think you're going to be successful? I thought Shima was going to get a little bit of a jerk in that moment. But I like that Kanachika's like, hey, um, I actually don't know. Because that's when he's like, look, senpai, what is your end game? What is your plans? And Kanachika's like, um, he's like, I want widespread acclaim, but like, I don't know where I'm going. He's like, I have dreams. I want to be the best. But he's like, but I don't, I don't think I want to direct and write, but I don't know. He's like, I'm just going to do it because I like it. He's like, I'm just, I'm in high school. I like that God, she kind of like, I'm in high school. I don't know what my future is going to entirely be. It may change. I, I'm just riding this out and having fun while it lasts and then see where it goes. And I feel like Shima was expecting a different answer. So when he tells him that he's kind of like Shima in that, I don't know what the future holds. I don't know what my purpose is but I'm going to have fun and do what I'm good at while I can. I'm like, okay. So that, that's so good to hear. I like, I love that Shima gets to hear that perspective. Cause I think Shima is so used to everyone around him having all these career goals and plans and things that they're going to do. And then suddenly, and then suddenly it's like, they don't. And he's like, oh, so there are people like me out there that are just, they don't have a goal or purpose, but they're still just doing things they're comfortable with. Oh, okay. And I love that. That was really good. I'm glad Shima got to hear that because he really needed to. So then I'm sure some people are going to say that the mom is being neglectful for letting her kid like wander off and see the other dance group, but it happens. And Kiri just wandering off. I mean, it, it happens and we see it all the time. I feel like Shima's mom looks like, um, the moms from like the 1990s uh, after school specials. She's got like the haircut and everything. And curse those people with their set design getting in the way of her seeing her son, right? Her son though going up to people and asking which classroom and remembering which classroom she must play in is really important. So that's good. I also like that it shows that little kids are a lot more perceptive than we think they are because his mom clearly said, oh, the play's in class one, three. And he remembered that and that's what he asked somebody. So I like that this, this show doesn't treat kids like they're dumb. It's like, no, they are perceptive. They may not understand everything going on, but they get things. And that's why Mukai tells him, he's like, hey, your brother's only three. He doesn't understand all the nuances of your relationship with your parents and acting that we all know because we've grown up with you and we're adults, we're young adults. But your, your brother's old enough to kind of realize if he gets the vibe that you don't want him around. And so that's why he avoids you because he doesn't want to make you mad. So you might want to be aware of that. And your brother's only three. So you might want to open up to him and realize he's just a kid, which is kind of like what Mitsumi told him back at the zoo. So I'm glad we get follow up with that. That part was really good. But Yamada, I like all the girls in the class instantly like flood towards them. Mitsumi freaks out. Mitsumi kind of looks like the little brother a little bit. But yeah, I love his little face where he's like, he's just sort of like, mm, I'm a little brother. I love it. And he, of course, he looks nothing like Shima. 
But I love all the girls gravitate, but Yamada's the one that maintains his cool. And and Yamada could be like a grade school teacher. I feel like if Yamada does not have plans at this moment for what he wants to do career-wise, Yamada could be a grade school elementary school teacher. I would let my kid be watched and taught by Yamada any day, right? And he'd wear like the little mustache and everything. It'd be so cute. I I really hope that he does that. I get like um there's a character in Haikyuu, Sugawara, who um who like wants to kind of do the same thing. So that's really cute. And so, but yeah, Shima goes and watches uh, Kanachika's play. I like, it's very, very minimal. It's like a one act. There's like a door that they made. There's like a table and chairs. They did not go all out like the family singers, but Kanachika's acting stands out. And he does like, he's not his normal, cheerful, like happy-go-lucky self. He's a Yakuza. So he's like more dramatic and serious. Anyway, he makes it work. I love it. And I, I felt like Shima wanted to go talk to him afterwards, but he kept getting held up by people and they were congratulating him. And I feel like, you know, seeing Hanachika so happy, Shima's like, what am I doing? Like, could, am I as happy as he is performing? Am I ready to accept that happiness? That's the problem. Shima has been gaslit so much and talked down to so much that he doesn't believe he's worthy of happiness in his life. And seeing Hanachika be happy, he's like, do I deserve that? And I'm like, and I can't decide if it's Hanachika or Kanachika. I keep mixing them up, so forgive me on that. But yeah, then Mukai comes, gets him, like the buffer he is, to go get his brother. And being like, look, he's like, he's my stepbrother. If I showered him with affection, my dad would feel awkward. Oh, okay. So they are stepbrothers. This is his stepdad's kid. And so he's like, so Shima... Again, wanting to please everyone is like, he's my stepbrother. So it, Shima feels like it's awkward because his mom's remarried this guy with a kid. And he's like, if I'm treating my stepbrother with kindness, my biological dad that's separated now will feel like it's awkward. I'm like, no. I'm like, Shima, it's like your parents are divorced. You have no control over that. It just was a relationship that didn't work. But... It's like you should not have to tread on eggshells to worry about making either of your parents feel bad by like, yeah, I'm like, I get that that's such a hard scenario and my parents are not divorced. So that's, that's hard for me, but my best friend, her parents are, and she has uh, three, several years older brothers. And it's like, you no, know, you can, it's fine. They're going to get over it. I feel like that's Shima's thing. He's so used to like people telling him like Rika that, you know, his actions have such an impact on them that it's like you need to leave Shima alone and just let him live his life and if it impacts you negatively that bad then you don't need to have a relationship with them that's just case in point point. and he's like I don't think Kiri's interested in me after all but it's like no he is and I like that Mukai's like look I don't know your family or anything but do you think a three-year-old would not care about his big brother like let's be real and he's like, why did my mom, and even then, he's like, why did my mom come and see me today? It's like, because she wants to see you. He's like, why would she want to come see the play? I'm like, because you're her son. And Rurika has done a number on him. And it is so hard to watch. And Mitsumi is like, I don't, Mitsumi's not fixing him because I hate the idea of people getting fixed by other people. I don't like that trope at all. But I feel like Mitsumi is showing him what, common decency looks like in a friendship and he deserves that decency right he deserves like some basic human rights you know and Rurika seems to be denying him that and it's terrifying right and then of course his brother sees him and has this little emotional moment where he's like oh my brother it's so cute it's like oh and yeah I like that they're like well you guys are brothers after all you're too considerate yeah it's like Kiri was sitting there with Yamada tolerating him and being like, okay, all right. And then ends up <laughs> showing how concerned and scared he was once he sees a familiar face. And Yamada's like, yeah, this is like you. You're really considerate, too considerate. You, you try to be complacent and try to compliment people too much. And I like that we get this notion that Shima sees that, that everybody else notices it, right? Mm -hmm. And maybe, maybe Shima's mom is just attracted to, maybe Shima's more like his dad. I don't know. He seems like his mom, but maybe she's attracted to people that are considerate. I don't know. Because Kiri's not her biological kid. 
I, I just love this moment and for Shima to see people caring about him. And Yamada's like, Yamada lays down the truth bomb. For better or worse, you are too considerate. And Shima's like, what? And that's when he realizes. I like seeing Shima flustered because Shima's so used to having this smile on his face. Like, nothing's wrong. I like that we see, like, we get to see the the cracks underneath the surface where he, like, sees his brother running away so they don't cross paths. I like the stare. The point where, where Kiri goes, stare. Reminded me of Yuri on Ice where there's the triplets and they're like, stare. Like, I love that, I love that when characters in anime, like, they, they vocalize the action happening. That was so good. But he's like, I was like that too growing up. It's like, yeah, kids are like that, right? And then him picking up his little brother... And his little brother has the keychain from the zoo. Like, his little brother cared about the keychain. Oh, my God. So cute. I love it so much. It's so sweet. But, yeah. And then the mom, she seems like a nice person. Her and Mitsumi traveling together. But then, damn, Mitsumi, it's like there's a three-way crosswalk right here. Mitsumi's there. Mitsumi's there. Shima's mom's there. Rurika's right there. The three of them are together. So there's going to be a confrontation. There's going to be stuff said. Mitsumi is right there in the middle of it. Oh my god. What do we do? What do we do? And then the episode just ends as storm clouds gather. No! Oh my god. I just... Why? Why? Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. It's crazy. So, yeah. I, I really hope that we get a season two. Um, I really hope that we do. I hope that's in the works sometime down the future because next week's the last episode and I'm not ready for that. Ah, so curses. <laughs> but um, I hope you all uh, enjoyed this episode. I'm excited to hear, um, I'm excited to hear your thoughts down below, but I hope you all have a wonderful week. Please stay safe, take care, and yeah, I'll be back very soon with the season finale of Skip and Loafer. Bye!